Welcome to the Mr. Basic Setup Guide. You will need a fully configured Mr. So I'm not talking you through the hardware setup. So I'll show you how to install the Mr. Fusion image. The first thing you want to do is go to the GitHub page. You will find all the links in the description below. I will talk you through the details so you don't really have to read anything. The first thing you want to do is click on the green code button and download the zip file. I'm using 7-zip to unzip the zip file. The next thing you want to download is the update all zip file. You will find the GitHub link in the description as well. This is a simple script that you put in your Mr. Scripts folder and it runs the update through the internet. You click the code button again, save the zip file and we will get to that later. In order to write your image onto the SD card, you will need some kind of image writer. I'm using Win32 Disk Imager. You will find a link in the description below. After you've downloaded a Win32 Disk Imager, just go through the installation process. I'm not going to talk you through that. All right, now we should have uh, three files. The Win32 Disk Imager, the Mr. Fusion image file, and the update all zip file. I'm opening the Win32 Disk Imager and I will point it to the location of the Mr. Fusion image. You will have to choose the drive where you burn the image to and you want to double check that you don't flash the wrong disk. We don't have to change any settings, you can keep everything on default. It will ask you to confirm one more time. The actual flashing process will only take a few seconds. Once this is done you can e-check the SD card and put it in your Mr. The image will install the system automatically. You don't have to do anything and it'll take about one or two minutes. Once this is done, you can eject the card and put it back into your computer. Watch out for a message that asks you to format the card. You don't want to format the card, otherwise you will have to burn the image again. Now you want to unzip the update all zip file that you downloaded previously and copy the update all.sh file to the scripts folder on your SD card. Once this is done, let's e-check the SD card and put it back in the mister. Press the escape key to get to the main menu and then navigate to the scripts folder. Do you want to continue? Say yes. Then go down to update all and run the script. When you get to this uh, loading screen here, you want to press the up cursor on your keyboard this gets you into this menu. So now here we can choose a few things. First of all, we'll go into the JT course and enable the premium course. We're going to switch on the Epsilon course for experimental course. The LAP, the low latency course, we're going to install those. The MAME getter will install arcade ROMs. Then there's the HB MAME getter, which will install homebrew arcade ROMs. I'm going to skip those for now. So let's go to the HB MAME menu and set disable to false, which will skip downloading the homebrew ROMs. Everything else I'm going to leave on default. And then I'm going to save the settings before I exit and run the update all script. You can always come back to this menu later and run individual updates. You don't have to run all the updates at the same time. And now we can finally exit and run the update all script. It will take around two to two and a half hours depending on your internet speed. I will skip past this and I'll see you in a bit. Okay. Here we go, after installing the update all script. Let's have a look. There are the low latency cores, so you can use your original controllers. A bunch of awesome arcade cores, including the ROMs. And of course, all the computer and console cores. So there's pretty much everything pre-installed you would want. 
now you just need to get yourself some ROMs. I'm not going to tell you where, but if you do a basic Google search, I'm sure you can find some there. At this point it would be a good idea to set up your USB controller. You can basically use any USB controller or joystick. By default it should work right away, but you want to make sure that you map all the buttons that you need. First you press right on your controller, and then you push the space bar twice to skip through stick 1 and 2 tests. Now you get to this setup screen, where you map everything you need. Up, down, left, right, A, B, X, Y, etc. I'm using an 8-bit DO arcade joystick for this. This basically sets up a mapping of a Super Nintendo controller. Anything that you don't want to map, you can just push the spacebar to skip it. For example, I don't need to map a mouse, so I'm skipping through these. Very important, you want to map a button for the menu key. I have a lot of buttons on my joystick, so I'm going to choose an appropriate one. This menu key is equivalent to the F12 key on a keyboard. So from now on you can control everything with your joystick or controller. There are extra buttons you can map, but I think these are good for now. When you're done, press the Enter key to confirm and finish. Now let's go and add some ROMs. Here we are back on the PC. Open the games folder on your SD card. So let's copy and paste some ROMs and test them out. I have some Mega Drive and Mega CD ROMs here. So I'm going to locate the Genesis folder first, which is the Mega Drive. And I'll unzip Alien 3 and then Super Fantasy Zone. Next, I'm navigating to the Mega CD folder on my SD card. And here you see that we have three folders pre-installed, Europe, Japan and USA. So I'm going to the USA one because I have two US uh, CD images. The first one being Space Ace. But I don't want to directly unzip them to this folder. I want to keep it organized. So I'm going to copy and paste the name of the game. I'm creating a new folder and paste the name, so it's the same. Then I unzip this archive directly to this new folder. This way everything will stay organized and you can find the games more easily. Then I'm going to do the same for Terminator. I'll copy and paste the name, create a new folder, paste it, go in the folder and then unzip the archive. Just make sure you unzip the entire archive, don't miss a file, otherwise the game may not work. Alright, there we go. Let's go back to the mystery and test them out. Navigate to the console folder and locate your Genesis core. So there are a lot of settings in every core. But I'm only going through the basics now. You can adjust the region based on the game that you have. Normally it should auto-detect the game, but it doesn't always work, so sometimes you have to do it manually. Next you can go to the audio and video settings. You'll find all kinds of settings here. The first thing you will want to do is define the buttons for your joystick or controller. Just follow the instructions and map all your buttons. Once you're done, Press the Enter key on your keyboard. You can say no for setting up alternative buttons. Make sure that you always save your settings if you change something in the menu. Now let's load a ROM. I'm going to load Super Fantasy Zone. By default you see that I've already set up a shadow mask. In the core menu, push right on your controller so you can access the shadow mask settings. Depending on the core I like One X best. You can try them out and see what you like best yourself. One X rotate looks good to me, but I'm going to keep them off for now. In the audio and video settings you can also set your scan lines, but I think they don't look very good on the Mega Drive core, so I'll keep them off as well. And again, make sure to save your settings when you change something in the core menu. 
And here we go with some sweet Super Fantasy Zone. An amazing game, by the way. So inside the game you can press F12 on your keyboard. It will bring up the menu again. You can also map this button to your controller. And I'm going to switch to another core, the Sega CD core. So you don't really have to reset your mister every time. You can switch a core from the menu. Again, I'm going to change the button mapping on my controller. And you'll have to do that for every core. The arcade cores have some mapping pre-installed, but I found that you usually have to do it for the other cores. Same thing here, don't forget to save your settings. I'm going to navigate to the US folder and load Terminator. Press the start button. Here we go. I didn't have a lot of Mega CD games back in the day, so it's kinda exciting to play them now. So let's go for a little Terminator action. It's a pretty cool game actually, similar to Probotector. Maybe not as good, but yeah, it plays really well. It's fun, so try it out. This concludes the basic Mr. Setup Guide. You should have everything to get up and running. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions or can't figure something out. If you like this tutorial, consider to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.